morning. Um, I appreciate everybody for coming uh, today. Um, this is a, um, a press conference involving an issue that um, just was reason that was recently um, known to Dr. Harrington and myself. In fact, it was last Thursday that we realized um, that something was amiss. That something was amiss. Um, and this past weekend, we studied the problem in detail and concluded that at least one of the ordinances on the ballot, 5676, is fraudulent. And we mapped out over this past weekend how that came to be. And um, this press conference in, in part is to walk you through it. So it's going to take a minute to walk you through it to understand the fraud that's been committed um, on the uh, citizens of Memphis. Um, and so we're just going to get started. Um, as we know, um, Ordinance 5676 is an ordinance that was supposedly designed to increase the term limits from two to three years. That's been stated uh, over and over again by the proponents and the, op and the opposition. Um, but when we walk you through it, that's not what it does. OK. Um, on January 23rd, 2018, the city council voted on this question. And this question being taking the term limits from two consecutive four-year terms to three consecutive four-year terms. But as we looked at this question this weekend, we realized that this was never the question that was intended to be placed on the ballot. In fact, another question was placed on the ballot, and that question took the term limit from two to four, not three. And this is that question. Buried in the agenda on January 23rd, 2018, was this second question. Was this second question, and it read, no person shall be eligible to hold or to be elected to the office of mayor or Memphis City Council if any such person has served at any time after December 31st, 2011, more than three consecutive four-year terms. So, as you see, the, this particular question, it added this date, and it extended the consecutive terms from two four-year terms to four four-year terms, because it's more than three. More than three. And so, this particular question and this particular issue um, wasn't really what got us started down this road. We just found this out uh, after we began to look at it. But after we found it out and after we learned it and, and, and discovered it, it was, it, it's important for the voters to know and understand that this question here, buried in the agenda item on January 23rd, doesn't take term limits from two to three. It takes it from two to four, from two to four. Anyway, as, as we all know, this passed. And after it passed, on April 5, Dr. Harrington announced his candidacy for a mayor and told the citizens of this city that once again he would be on the ballot and they could vote him up or down, but he was running again for a mayor. That was on April 5. After April 5, the question that I just showed you changed. This is the question I just showed you. 
that was approved on January 23rd, 2018. Dr. Harrington announces for mayor on April 5th, and as part of the referendum process, city government is required to send to the election commission the referendum question. And you will see that on August 23rd, 2018, the city of Memphis sent over a new question. The new question they sent over on April 23rd, 2018 was never voted on and they removed these words after December 31, 2011. Those words were removed from the referendum question and by removing those words, now this referendum question, the only, part, the only mayor that it could apply to is Dr. Harrington. So it is obvious why these words were removed. They were removed to prevent Dr. Harrington from running for mayor in 2019. Now we're going to get to who, who did it. All right. And once again, here's all the questions lined up from the very first one. You can just read them, you just read them in sequence and, and you can see how they change. The first question is what they told the voters they were, they were voting on. The second question is the question that was hidden in the agenda. And the third question is the question that they changed after Dr. Harrington announced he was running for mayor. Okay, so how did this happen? How did this happen? We know that on August 20th, 2018, um, Deputy Comptroller certified, she certified questions to send over to the election commission. That's her job, to certify the question. And the question she certified was the, the question that had December 31 in it. So she certifies that this is the question that should be on the ballot. And that's August 20th. Well, on August 23rd, the chairman of the city council sent a different question. He sent a different question. And the question he sent removed the date. And by removing the date, the question he sent is a really a referendum on Dr. Harrington, whether Dr. Harrington should be able to run again. And so you can see by removing the date, three days after the deputy comptroller certified the question, that it's a whole totally different question with a different meaning and a different implication. Well, who, who, got, who was copied on this communication? And we know that the mayor was copied, Erlen Boyd, Bruce McMullen, and here is the, ad, ad, the administrator of the elections saying she received it on August 23rd, 2018. So at this time, we have a certified question by the deputy comptroller. We have an illegal and unlawful question having been sent over by the chairman of the council. And the commission put on the ballot the illegal and unlawful question. So on the ballot is a question 
that has never been voted on by the city council as required by the city charter, as required by our state constitution, um, and you can see that when she sent over, when this question was, was sent over, Doug McGowan, who's the CAO of the city, and also the interim director of finance, certified that this was the question that had been approved by the city council. So we know that this ordinance number 5676 that was submitted to the Shelby County Investment Commission was never voted on or approved and as such it violates the city charter and our constitution. And as a result of these actions, um, this week we formed a committee against referendum ordinance 5676. And the purpose of that committee is if this ordinance passes, and it's, it's, it's on the ballot, it's been voted on today, by forming this committee, it gives Dr. Harrington standing to challenge, to challenge uh, it in court. And so we <laughs> formed that committee yesterday, yesterday, and we intend to file that challenge if the order passes. But beyond that, um, we also intend to file a lawsuit against the individuals who, who were a part of this. Um, as many of you know, I've been in, I was in city government for a, a time, and I've, I've been around a, a, a long time. I've never seen anything like this, um, where out of the box, the ordinance, the ordinance that is being voted on was never intended to be on the ballot. It was never intended to be an ordinance that extended terms from two to three. The intent was to take terms from two to four. That's, that's bad enough. But to then take the certified question from the deputy comptroller, remove language so that it would prohibit Dr. Harrington from running for mayor, um, I'm not quite sure what you call that. I'm not quite, quite sure what you call that. Um, but as a result of these actions that we proved and we have proof, proof of, uh, we are now in litigation mode. And we will find out who, who was involved, whether it's the mayor, whether it's the entire city council, we're going to find out. And um, we're going to prosecute a lawsuit against all of those who were involved who attempted to damage Dr. Harrington and his ability to run for mayor. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Harrington for comments. He can make house. He is he, Robert Spence. For the record, Willard W. Harrington. <laughs> Let me first of all thank all of you for, uh, for coming here today and uh, to participate in this uh, press conference. I want to express my uh, full appreciation and confidence in the detailed analysis that Attorney Spence has just provided you. Um, I want all of you to know that uh, this is not fake news. The Russians are not involved. This is news that has taken place that involves high level officials in the Memphis city government and individuals involved in the Shelby County Election Commission. That's why we're here today. This is real news, not fake news. It involves officials in high places that have clearly exhibited unethical 
and disgraceful behavior. I've been involved in public service for well over 40 years, and I've seen a lot of treachery. I've seen some dishonesty. I've seen some trust relationships broken. Uh, but never in my political career have I seen uh, this type of unethical behavior uh, in the body politics of Memphis and Shelby County. Let me summarize um, what Attorney Spence has revealed to you. First of all, what he's saying is someone threw a rock at Willie W. Harrington. But Pastor the Rock cried out, no hiding place. So today, Attorney Spence is revealing that the rock was thrown, but there's no hiding place. I'm reminded of what Dr. King used to always tell us. Truth crushed to the earth shall rise again. No lie can live forever. What the attorneys presented to you today represents, and I want to be clear on this, I'll make it emphatically clear, is deception, is conspiracy, is fraud. There's nothing ambiguous about that. Trace the sequence of events. Trace the officials that are involved. And through this process, we're going to determine the who, the what, and the when. I think Attorney Spence has very adroitly done a good job of showing you what happens when. Now, my common sense tells me that 5676 was divided one clear intent, and that intent was to deny Willie W. Harrington the right to participate as a candidate for mayor in the electoral process in 2019. Clear intent. And if you can't understand that, I don't know who you attend. Clear intent. And this intent if it were carried out, would certainly violate my rights. What you've seen here today is simply not right. It's wrong. The citizens of Memphis ought to have a right to vote for me or against me in a fair process. But for officials in the Strickland administration, in conspiracy with the Shelby County Election Commission to devise methods to deprive the citizens of Memphis the opportunity to vote for or against me is wrong. And we're going to exercise every right we have to pursue justice with vigilance. So I want to thank all of you for uh, coming uh, uh, here today. Let me just kind of deviate uh, uh, just a little bit. Uh, that's the nice side of it. Now let me get to the real raw side of this. Now let me speak to Mayor Strickland. Uh, when I announced on April 5th that I was going to be a candidate for a mayor, I've had a number of people to try to get me to say something about the mayor. If you've noticed, I've refrained. I just simply said, I will be a candidate. I've not said anything positive about the mayor, anything negative about the mayor. I simply wanted the right to be on the ballot. And when we get into a competitive campaign, he can give his platform, I give mine. But, but, witnessing, witnessing this unethical, devious and wicked behavior on the part of the Strickland administration in cooperation with somebody in that election commission the gloves off. And I want the mayor to know 
in case he's not familiar with Isaiah 54 and 17. Y'all look it up. No weapon. And they tried to form a weapon here against me. But it ain't going to prosper. The citizens of Memphis deserve the right to either to vote for me or against me. And no conspiracy, no conspiracy, no devious behavior among high-level governmental officials in the city government and the Shelby County Election Commission is going to deprive the citizens of the right to vote for me. Remember, truth crushed the earth. It shall rise again. And I thank you all for coming this evening. I'm sure uh, you may have some questions. And let me just say this to you. Some of you all are new. And don't ask me anything stupid. Don't ask me anything left-handed. Only ask me questions that are germane and relevant to this press conference. That's the ground rule. Step outside of that, then we got another deal. Mayor, if anyone definitely informed you this referendum if it passed would disqualify you as a candidate, have you informed that of any legal source other than Mr. Smith? What do you mean informed? Can you read? Well, that's what it says. Well, it's just to interpret language like this. Well, I'm just telling you, what do you mean? Uh, I've not heard this question discussed in a public forum up until uh, Thursday when we brought it up. Why, why aren't you asking public officials? They know that this particular ordinance, 5676, is inappropriately on the ballot. People are voting today, Jackson, on an ordinance that was not approved by the city council. That's unlawful. He just traced you what was wrong. So your question has already been answered. The second question, is there a chance you would be grandfathered in since, since you've already announced the candidacy? That, in fact, the campaign's already begun before this thing's even yeah. No, it hasn't. It hasn't effectively begun. You know the rules. When I become a candidate officially, there's a particular time I will go to the election commission. I will have a petition with at least 25 or 100 people. No. They let me know. To answer your question. Dr. Harrington. Yes, sir. The reading of the audience now states at any time. Yes, sir. You're the only living person besides Joe Brown that this audience would affect. Most audience that we've seen have a in the future date. Correct. Or your grandfather or into it. Do you think that this is a conspiracy by the mayor's office to make sure that you are not a candidate in this election next year? Uh, Mr. Matthews is abundantly clear to me. Uh, what you're witnessing here in high level governments in the Strickland administration and what remains to be answered is whether or not there are officials or one official in the election commission. Something happened. If you followed wrong, uh, Attorney Spence, one document was sent from the city over to the election commission. We believe the document that was sent to the election commission is not what people are voting on today. That's fraud. That's deception. And if you look at this particular ordinance, it has it, it only impacts a, a class of one. That class of one is Willie W. Harrington. At any time, if you follow what uh, uh, Spence showed you, someone skillfully drafted this and they inserted, when they took out the December of 2011, and they inserted another at any time which meant they could retroactively, uh, Mr. Matthews, go back and to include a public servant who had served for three or more consecutive terms. I am the only mayor, a former mayor, that's in that class. So why didn't they just simply say, this is the Willie Harrington ordinance to prevent him from being a candidate as mayor in 2019? rather than play devious games. Did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Mayor, how, how were you all made aware of this? Did you all take a look? Let me explain to you how I was made aware of it. So you'll know we don't engage in deception. I'm sitting at my desk Thursday evening. I took time to read the, the verdict of uh, 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 Chancellor Jim Cowles. I've been watching these debates about runoff voting and all of that. And I sat down at my desk and I started reading the question. And I looked at 5676 and I couldn't believe it. I said, I think I'm reading this right. I said, this is really a clear intent to deprive Willie W. Harrington of being eligible to be a candidate for mayor in 2019. I immediately called my colleague. And then I called my attorney. <laughs> attorney Spence said, Doc, I've never read it. <laughs> attorney Spence went to his office, pulled it up on the computer, got back with me and said, Doc, I just read it. You are right. He said, this is unbelievable. I said, it is quite unbelievable. I said, all of these discussions, why is this particular issue not in the public forum? It was there. So to answer your question, Thursday evening. Any more questions? Dr. Harrison. Yes, sir. Or, or Mr. Smith, if we can go back to the certification. So what we have certified by the election commission is which provision? Now, what Ms. Snipes is certifying, the deputy comptroller, she's certifying the actual question as it first appeared. That's the one that was passed in January? Correct. Okay. So that doesn't have the... So it's, cer it's certifying that at any time after December 31st, 2011. Right. That's, that's the one that's certified. That, that's the question that was approved. And that's she's correct. certifying right. that's the question that was approved. That, at that particular spectrum, that would make Dr. Harriton able to run. That's correct. Correct. So the one that was sent over by Boyd, Boyd, Berlin Boyd, and CC to the mayor says something totally different. That's correct. correct. And it has not been approved That's by the correct. council. Correct. No one's ever voted on it. So it makes it an illegal act. And, and the reason I'm, I'm asking that, once I found out about it, I called several council members. First of all, they don't know what the hell they voted for. Uh, that are not familiar with this particular language. They thought that the December 31st was the question that was going to be on the ballot. So I'm saying, why is it that you're waiting to after the election to deal with it and not before uh, November 6th? Well, um, as we learned from Chancellor Kyle yeah, right. last week, mm -hmm. it's a matter of rightness. And in the litigation that was filed last week, Chancellor Kyle ruled that the proper time to challenge an, an election was post-election, right. not pre-election. Now, if we had known about this fraudulent behavior back earlier in the year, mm -hmm. we would have filed in. But, but we didn't know about it until last Thursday. And so with respect to the election contest challenge, if this is approved, it would be filed the very next day after the vote. But we're going to file another lawsuit against the individuals that were involved in this. Now that, uh, now that this is the first day of early voting, what would you say to citizens that are going to the polls today and that fraudulent ordinance is on the ballot, what would you say to them? Do they say, just leave that one alone on no, the ballot? No, let me, let me speak to that. Uh, what we're going to say to them, uh, Thaddeus, is, and we're going to go on social media and all of this, Obviously, uh, there's some confusion. Uh, we're going to say to them to vote no. 
We're going to say vote no on this particular question, okay? If you were to ask me, mm -hmm. vote no. Participate in the process, mm -hmm. but vote no. Uh, the other thing I would, I would say to the citizens of Memphis, it is unfortunate that we find ourselves on the first day of early voting with this dilemma that was contrived, contrived by governmental officials up the mayor's office, and we believe that some officials with the Shelby County Election Commission are part of this. That's why that is. I characterize all of this behavior, I believe, into three areas. It's deception, it's conspiracy, and fraud. And it's a damn shame. All right, that concludes the press conference, and uh, we appreciate everybody for coming. Uh, thank you.